Sukhjit Singh was a man from a wealthy family described as ambitious and dedicated. He was born in India, and according to family and friends, he was a very religious man and well known among the Sikh community in his city. For those who don't know, Sikhism is a widespread religion in India with approximately 30 million adherents. At the time of the event, Sukhjit was 34 years old and married to a woman named Ramandi, who was 38. Ramandi was born in the United Kingdom, came from an upper middle class family, and had a very good childhood and education. She was the daughter of businessman Paul Mann and Amarjit Kaur. In addition to her, the couple had three other daughters. The marriage between Sukhjit and Ramandeep seemed perfect. A friend of the couple says that Sukhjit was completely in love with his wife and felt very fulfilled having married her. The two met in the year 2002 in the United Kingdom when Sukhjit was 20 years old and Ramandeep was 17 and about three years later in the year 2005, they got married. According to sources, the couple had a pizzeria in the county of Surrey in England, which they ran together. They lived in Surrey for a few years until they moved to Derby to raise their two sons, Arjun, who was born in 2007, and Aryan, who arrived three years later, in 2010. Ramandeep was seen as a dedicated and hard-working mother. Her marriage to Sukhjit was not arranged, as is the case in many marriages in India. Everything happened naturally. They met, they liked each other, they started dating, and then they got married. In Derby, they lived in a middle-class house and enjoyed a quality of life. According to close friends of the couple, their families got along very well, and although the marriage was not arranged, they approved of their union. In the city of Derby, there is a large Indian community which helped create new business opportunities for the couple. Previously, the couple even considered moving to London, the country's capital, but after analyzing it more calmly, they saw that in Derby they would earn more money. At one point, Ramandi, who studied graphic design in college, managed a branch of a large company and took on a second job to make more money for his family. Sukhjit, on the other hand, decided to open a logistics company which he named Arjun Transport after his first son, as I have already mentioned. Sukhjit was a devout Sikh and according to sources, he went to Derby's Sri Guru Singh Sabha Temple every Sunday. He also volunteered as a project manager at the city's National Sikh Museum. Girbal Singh, a man who worked with Sukhjit at the museum, said that he was a very dedicated man and that it appeared that he and his wife got along very well and there were no signs of difficulties. Everyone on the outside believed that the two were very passionate about each other and that their relationship would last for several years, but they were wrong and this relationship would end tragically. Despite good appearances, it seems that the couple faced internal problems. Sukhjit was a very protective man, but he also tended to make some decisions hastily. Ramandipi had a certain level of control over him and usually convinced him to do what she wanted. People in the Sikh community didn't like much about the way she behaved, so it sometimes went against their tradition. The woman liked expensive things such as clothes and jewelry. She was quite vain and loved to attract attention. According to another friend of the couple, Sakjit did practically all of his wife's tastes as he was madly in love with her. Some people close to the couple commented that Ramandeep always got what she wanted and that she was very toxic towards her husband. In November 2015, the couple took their children on vacation to Dubai at the home of Sukhujit's close friend, a man named Gurpreet Singh. The two men had known each other since their school days and Sukhjit affectionately referred to Gurpreet as his brother, even though they were not related. Gurpreet, who was a truck driver and also worked in construction, took a few days off to join his friend's family on outings during their stay. They took several photos together and posted them on social media celebrating the meeting. But without Sukhjit realizing it, Ramandeep and Gurpreet his wife and best friend, became much more than friends and began an extramarital affair during that trip. After the trip ended, 
and the family returned home. Ramandeep and his lover continued to communicate through a messaging app, and during these exchanges, they started thinking of a way to get suckers out of their way. It was then that they came up with a whole plan, a macabre plan whose victim would be Sukhjit. Still in 2015, towards the end, Ramandeep planned a month of family vacation in the state of Uttar Pradesh, located in northern India. The idea was to spend all the holidays at her mother-in-law's house in the village of Basant Pure. All of this, this vacation trip, was part of the plan, as Ramandeep chose that region of India to get to know the area better and then put his plan into practice. Then, the following summer, July 2016, Ramandeep invited Gurpreet, her lover, to spend a few days with her and her family at her mother-in-law's house. Sukjit liked the idea. After all, Gurpreet was his best friend and so far he didn't see anything wrong with his wife inviting him to join them on this visit to Besantapur. However, while the entire family was gathered, Sukjit noticed a very strange interaction between his wife and his best friend. At that time, he didn't say anything, but he started to notice the two more to make sure it wasn't just something in his head. The following month, more precisely, on August 22, Sukhjit confronted his wife about his distrust. Ramandeep tried to talk things out, but in the end, Sukhjit discovered everything. The couple, along with their children and also Gurpreet, formerly Sukhjit's best friend, were still at his mother's house in Besantapur village. That's because they liked the place so much that they decided to extend their time there and even had intentions of maybe moving there. However, as Sukhjit found out about his wife and best friend, he told his wife that after they returned to England, it was up to each other and he would take legal action against her. Ramandeep didn't like this at all and saw that this was the time to put her macabre plan into practice so she would get rid of her husband and still keep all his assets and be able to live her romance with her new love. In the midst of all this, Sukhjit even opened up to some friends and relatives about his discovery. Friends and relatives advised him to end his marriage immediately and thus be free from his unfaithful wife. However, Sukhjit said that he was very bewildered by it all, that he never expected this from his wife, and that when they returned to England, he would resolve it. Friends and relatives said it was crazy, that the longer he took to end the marriage, the more he would suffer. But Sukhjit didn't listen. He needed time to digest all that. But what he didn't know was that this time would be time for his wife to put her macabre plan into practice. On September 2, 2016, after putting sedatives in her husband's and children's food, Ramandeep allowed Gurpreet Singh to enter the house where they were staying to carry out the plan. Ramandeep suffocated her husband with a pillow and then Gurpreet struck the man several times on the head with a hammer. Not satisfied, Ramandeep still made a deep cut in the region of her husband's throat, who at that point was no longer alive. Ramandeep had prepared a dish called Dahal for dinner and put sedatives on it, hoping that everyone in the family would eat it and be sedated. However, only Sukhjit and his youngest son, six-year-old Aryan, consumed the dish and consequently the sedative. The couple's eldest son, Arjun, didn't touch the bed that night as he wasn't very hungry and chose to eat instant noodles, but Ramande ate due to an oversight, did not realize this. So, without the couple knowing, Arjun, who was nine years old at the time, witnessed everything. The very scared boy ran to his grandmother's house, which was very close by, and tearfully told him about everything he saw. At first, the boy's grandmother thought it was some bad joke, but when she saw how scared the boy was, she decided to call the police. The police took a while to arrive at the scene, as it is a village a little far away, but as soon as they arrived they arrested Ramandeep. The woman tried to pretend she was innocent, saying that the person responsible for their crime was a thief who had broken into the house. Until then, she did not know that her own son had seen everything and was a strong witness against her. As the police took a long time to arrive at the village, Gurpreet had already fled the scene, which was part of the plan devised by him and Ramande. 
He was later arrested at the airport, trying to catch a flight back to Dubai. During investigations, Indian police discovered that the lovers intended to obtain two million pounds sterling from Sukhjit's life insurance and another 100,000 pounds in assets belonging to the victim. At the current exchange rate, almost two million and seven hundred thousand dollars. Ramandi and Gurpreet planned to start a new life with all his money. According to Indian investigators, the lovers decided that they would commit the crime in India, as they believed it would be easier to escape the crime as the country is considered third world. For them, if they committed the crime in England or Dubai, the chances of being caught would be greater. Ramandeep Karman and Gurpreet Singh were formally charged with the crime against Suk Singh and detained to await their trials. The crime quickly spread throughout India and later throughout the world. Even with all the proof evidence and even her own son's testimony against Ramandeep, her family supported her and stood by her. For them, everything was nothing more than a plan by Sukjit's family to frame her. A plan that, according to them, involved the couple's nine-year-old son who was lying about what he saw. About seven months after Ramandeep's arrest, her family managed to get her out of jail after paying a huge bail, the amount of which was not revealed. As a result, Ramandeep was free to answer for the crime, but was not allowed to leave the country. This was almost unheard of in India, for someone accused of a serious crime to be allowed to go free. But if there's one thing I've learned in my life, in a corrupt world, money buys almost everything. Ramandiep's family tried every way to use their money and political connections to get her out of the country. According to sources, on lawyers alone, the family spent more than 100,000 euros. But despite all this effort by Ramandiep's family to free her from justice, everything was in vain. The trial of the couple of lovers took place seven years after the crime. In October 2023, the prosecution's main witness was Arjun, the victim's eldest son with Ramandep, who is currently 16 years old. The boy's testimony was crucial to the case. According to him, on the night of the crime, he was sleeping next to his father in his bed and woke up to the sight of his mother suffocating his father with a pillow. He was so scared that he couldn't have any reaction and just pretended he was still sleeping because he was afraid of what they could do to him. As a result, he ended up witnessing the entire crime and said it was something he would never forget. He also said that as soon as his mother and her lover left the room, he took the opportunity to run to his grandmother's house. Still in court, Gurpreet confessed to the crime, but said that the entire idea came from Ramandeep and that it was she who ordered him to buy the knife and hammer used in the crime. Ultimately, the couple of lovers were found guilty of the crime. Gurpreet Singh was sentenced to life imprisonment and fined PS3000. Ramandep Kaur Mann was sentenced to death by hanging, but her lawyers appealed the decision, asking for the sentence to be changed to life imprisonment. For now, until this video was recorded, they were still unable to reverse the sentence. As soon as she heard her conviction, Ramandep shouted that she was innocent and that the crime was actually a setup by Sukjit's family against her. After the trial ended, Gurpreet was sent to a medium security men's prison. Ramandeep was sent to Shah Jahanpur district prison, known to be an overcrowded prison. Since being arrested, Ramandeep has never shown remorse or regret. On the contrary, she has always acted arrogantly towards the authorities, thinking she is superior to everyone. In Shah Jahanpur prison, she shared a cell with 55 other inmates and had to sleep on the floor. In an interview, the first given after he was arrested, Ramandev said that the situation was horrible and that it was like being in hell. She said it was the worst thing that had happened to her and that she was feeling very alone. I just wanted to know how since there are 55 people in the same cell as her, according to her, the food and conditions in the prison are terrible and the only thing she knows how to do lately is cry. She also said that no one from the British High Commission came to visit her since she was sentenced, something she considered a slight as she was a British citizen. Still during the interview, 
Ramandep said once again that he was innocent and that everything was a setup by Sukhjit's own family. According to her, they committed the crime to prevent the man from selling the 21 acres of land he owned in India. When asked, she did not want to go into details about her marriage and her affair with Gurpreet, her husband's best friend who helped her in the crime. The woman ended the interview by saying that since she was arrested, she hasn't seen her children anymore and that it hurts a lot. Ramandeep went from a comfortable and luxurious life to a life in one of the worst prisons in India. In addition to having to share a cell with 55 other inmates, she has to get up at 6 a.m. in queue, up to take a cold water shower with a tap and bucket in an extremely dirty bathroom. The prison also houses around 1,300 male inmates who are kept in a separate section from women. In total, Shajahanpur prison holds almost 2,000 inmates, both men and women, but its capacity is only 511. Ramandiyap is the only foreign prisoner there and the only one sentenced to death. His lawyers, as I already mentioned, are appealing the sentence, but it is likely to take years for it to be evaluated. After the case, the couple's children lived with a paternal uncle in London. According to reports, Arjun, the eldest son and the one who witnessed the entire crime, said that he no longer wants contact with his mother and that he will never forgive her for what she did. And this was the story of Ramandi Karman, a woman who planned to take her own husband's life with her lover in a crime motivated by betrayal and ambition. Well folks, that's it. Thank you very much for watching me until the end. Best wishes and I see you next time.